Ryan, you're in run of Fez. How are you, buddy? Hey, buddies. What's going on? Yeah. Um, Steve Nash, the reigning MVP, is a Canadian, and he he uh, he's, he was the MVP of the NBA last year. I know. You can't say enough good things about Steve Nash. I know he's white, Earl, but you can't say enough good things about him. He's this generation's Larry Bird. He's fu Why? Why be so fucking racist? He 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 had plays no way like Larry Bird. He only has the same skin color. No, I, I admit that as a compliment. He has I know the same you heart. did. Yeah. He has, definitely has that heart. But that's all you can find. All you, the only person you can compare him to is a fucking white guy who his game doesn't even slightly resemble. No, I just meant as far as... You're a racist, my friend. A reverse racist. You basically said Steve Nash is a credit to his race. Earl, you remind me of Moms Mabley, the way you're over there. Seriously. You remind me of Cedric the Entertainer. You see what it's like for us, Earl, when we go through that? I didn't mean it that way. Yeah, but it comes across. It's not the meaning. Um, it's the way it comes across. Uh, Bill, you're on running Fez. Yeah, I miss racist Earl. <laughs> it's, he's back. Yeah, hey, listen. Both you only missed him by a minute. Both our national anthem and the song America were composed in England by Englishmen. Why can't yeah. we come up with our own fucking song? People can't even sing our national anthem. And then he tried to, um, was it Irving Berlin, tried to do God Bless America. He tried to make that the official anthem of the country, but it never caught on. I like to have Kate Smith replace the Eagle. And it's just a big fucking Kate Smith head every time that you're trying to celebrate. Talk about endangered. I wouldn't even mind uh, going with Jesus Take the Wheel by Carrie Underwood. Anything is more <laughs> singable than that damn national anthem. Uh, Ross, Ross, you're on Fez. Hey, Ryan, how you doing? Yeah. Hey, man, uh, Steinberg, pull this team out and put the Yankees into this damn thing. Steinberg, release these Yankees and let them play. What's he got? Three of them already. Hey, Ryan, got booed in Mexico, and he's not even from there. Matt, you're on Fez. Hey, thanks for putting me on, guys. Love your show. I love the Collins because it just shows how ignorant so many Americans are. Fezzy, thanks for pointing it out. So many of you Americans think that outside of your own country, it's third world. Yeah. And I just wanted to point out Washington Nationals, Montreal Expos. Well, you know, you guys were drawing like 18 people up there. It wasn't even a big league park anymore. Uh, we still gave you a winner, though. <laughs> they were more the Puerto Rican Expos by the time they got to Washington. Uh, hey, but, uh, Mex Mexico wins today over Canada one nothing. The U.S. is out, and it will be the happiest day of my life. Let, let me ask you something, Matt. You think Canada, the smart move would be to tank this game? Oh, I, I, if I was on the Canadian team, I'd tank it just so the U.S. would lose. I can't fucking believe that we're hoping to back into this thing on a big Canadian victory. To me, this is just unbelievably embarrassing. Yeah, it's dangling by a thread. There it That's goes. all we Canada got left, threads. To again. Canada coming to save your asses again, eh? Again? When's the first time you saved us? Well, yeah, good point there, Ronnie. All right, so at least you're saving us once. All right, we'll have to watch this game today. And, Earl, here's what I want to do. If it sounds like Mexico is winning, I want the XM plug pulled, and we go to music immediately. On some Van Halen? Yes. It's just straight into fucking Van Halen. And nobody knows what happens. It's Canada versus Mexico today on XM Channel 182, 8 o'clock in the East, 8 o'clock tonight. John, you're on a Fez. Hey, hey. It's two of the best things Canada, I mean, Canada was brought to the country. Hydroponic weed, and we say that it's doing a revolutionary war. You know, we, we can't say enough about your weed, but I didn't remember you doing a lot of good things for us during the revolution. Oh, we did, yeah. Philadelphia, New York wouldn't even be there right now. We wouldn't there. All I remember you doing was supplying the British troops, but what do I know? What do I know at all? Uh, here is Jack. Jack, you're on Run of Fez. You know, with Nazi technology, the U.S. was... Hey, Radio put, Shark. The U.S. was able to put a man on the moon. Hey, Radio Shark, what's Who? up? Who? Yeah. My name is Jack. Jack, why can't you use your real name? You know I would put you up and we would talk to you. And on every Apollo rocket that went up, yeah. there's a hidden swatch sticker on the side. A hidden what? Swatch sticker? Is that what you said? Those cool fun watches <laughs> from the 90s? Well, just stickers to say <laughs> buy them here. <laughs> Radio Shark. We invented rocketry. Ra I, I said it earlier. I agree with you 100%. We won them over with Glenn Miller and uh, Chevys. Well, and a lot of bombs. Thank you very much. 
Uh, here is Tyler. Tyler, you're on Running Fez. Yeah. So, Black, oh, you're saying uh, Steve Nash is the Larry Bird of our generation. So Magic Johnson on TNT even said that he, the only guy that reminds him of himself is Steve Nash. And I actually, I compare him to Magic. See, what do you say to that, Earl? That Not, fucking Earl, that makes you sick, doesn't it? No, I'm just saying as far as... As that a hard. white man can play like a black guy no. makes you sick. No, not at all. I mean, just as far as, like, Larry Bird was the slowest guy on the court. He was. Nash is not the fucking slowest guy on the court. No. He's the fastest. I understand that, but I'm just saying, but he's the smallest guy on the court. I, I mean, you, it's a it, bad... There is no comparison other than skin color. Skin color is the only comparison you have. But I say they both have equal heart. That's all I'm saying. The size of their heart? They, you know what? Here's the thing is, they act like a white guy can only be good at the sport if he somehow wills it. If it's a miracle anytime a white guy excels. It's some kind of miracle story where, oh, he had to work his ass off. Where Michael Jordan, they act like he never even practiced. They act like, oh, Michael do, could do whatever he wanted. He just walked out there and shot. And it's almost an insult to both players. Do you see what I'm saying, Earl? Yes, I understand that point. I'm just saying as far as... Uh, You're digging a fucking yes, bigger I hole. I won't say anything. Like every racist always does. You act like for a white guy to win, he's got to be fucking Rudy. Just to somehow stick with it and hope for that fucking miracle play. He didn't know he couldn't succeed. He's like this. Well, Larry Bird was the slowest guy on the court. I fucking have to slow my TiVo down to watch Nash go to the basket. No, but I was... Never mind. You're right, Ron. Isn't he more of the Kevin Stockton, Earl? Earl, I just don't want to hear nothing but white players fucking with them. That's not right. Here's uh, Raymond. Raymond, you're on Ren Fez. Hi, how can we depend on Canada? You know, when they wouldn't even back us in the war against terror. You know, they'll intentionally you lose that game against Mexico. You know what? I mean, it would be real nice to start this anti-Canada thing, but they whipped our ass. You're right. They whipped our ass. And this is just about the sport. The war on terror is fucking... You don't even want to get into what the score of that is right now. And you start counting the countries that aren't in. Here is Tommy. Tommy, you're running Fez. Hey, I think the new uh, national anthem, isn't it that Gary Glitter song? It's starting to feel that way. That's the way we're playing, as if we are a nation of Gary Glitters. This is not a soundboard. It's me, Fezzy. Hiya. There's seven dicks in my ass, and there's always room for eight. Shove a potato in my ass and watch me make french fries. Nothing better than six-year-old balls. They have such tiny cocks. That hurt like a dick in the ass. It's cock time. Hey. 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 Really? You got it. No, uh-uh. Littler when they bend over. Let me your meat foot and I'll play you a song. Your mom's here, get your clothes on. Time out, my bung is dripping. It's cock time. Hey! Yes. Oh, sure. This is not a soundboard. You got it. Rude and rude. Why does my back smell like chlorine? Yes. I like tickling the balls. Hey! 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 Shh, 
kids, it's our little secret. Don't tell daddy. Come here, this fatty needs a fucking. Really? Hey! Hey, who's up next for teabagging? All right, there you have it. And I don't know. After listening to that, I, uh, I'm i not really sure. I'm on board. Yeah, I don't know if that's the perfect song for our new national anthem. Uh, is there a song called Racist Earl or Earl Looks Down on uh, White People? I uh, I would love to hear that. Uh, here is, uh, I'm going to guess, The Colonel. You're on Running Fence. Hey, boys. Hey, hey buddy. Uh, Steve Nash reminds me of Larry Bird, just like Black Earl reminds me of O.J. Simpson. All right, do you see, yeah, do you see where we're going with that, Earl? I just meant as far as just the enthusiasm for the game and their heart and... They're just everything. They're, they're great and that's, professional pros. See, spirit is a fucking white person's thing. To have pep and spirit, right? That's what you're saying. No. Not we need much. enthusiasm to win. We're not going to get by on just abilities. Hey, Joe. Joe, you're on run of Fez. What's happening, boys? Hey, buddy. I just wanted to know, uh, Fez, who is Kevin Stockton? Did I get that name wrong? I thought yeah, uh, that you did. John Stockton? With the, oh, Kevin Stockton. <laughs> John Stockton, John Stockton is the basketball player. Oh, okay. With the Jazz? Yeah. Thanks, Fez. Here is uh, Dave. Dave, you're around at Fez. How you doing, buddy? Uh, pretty good. Hey, I just want to know if uh, if white is code, or excuse me, if heart is code for uh, white. That's what it seems like. Earl has some code words that he uses for white ball players, and heart seems to be one of them. That kid's got a lot of heart to stay out there with the athletes. No, not at all. I think look, there's plenty of black players I think have a lot of heart. Like uh, Nate, I think it's Nate Robertson for the Knicks, who's like 5'7 or 5'8. All right, so if you're tiny. No. And uh, that means that you're almost white. If you're small and black, hey, he's white-like. You know, Earl, this is starting to hurt me a little bit. It really is. What I'm going to do now... You know how I put on the black face to see how black people live. After I do that, I'm going to put white face over that, walk up in Harlem, and see how I'm treated, Fez. And I bet it's differently. Your face is going to be huge by the time you get all this makeup on it. I don't say things about you. Let's not bring in physical things, Fezzy. Let's not do that. Uh, here is a Mohawk. You're on Fez. Hey, buddy. Yeah. I just want to... Uh say that I am extremely disappointed in Earl this morning. Me That's what getting back on my good side. I was all about the compliment, about the big tribute. Right. And with East Side Dave there, Earl's been looking like a million bucks, and then he goes and pulls his racist, militant bullshit. And it, I just think it's totally uncalled for. It really is uncalled for, Earl. It definitely is. It didn't come up. I didn't mean it that way at all. You still haven't apologized. I'm sorry if it offended Anyone out there, and everyone out there. All you people with heart. All you people with heart that need to hold on to your little dreams. Please, I didn't mean it. It's people of heart. Here's Stretch, you're running Fez. Yo, Fezzy, did uh, Kevin Stockton used to run the pick and roll with Jeff Malone or what? Leave Fez alone. Now I don't even know what you're talking about, He's Stretch. struggling. Hey, you can't compare Nash to a black player because he gives up the rock. Big up the AZ, see ya! <laughs> See, Earl, now there's racism you can understand, right? What he's saying is, oh, the white guy here, he's great at fucking passing. Uh, here is Fat Boy. Fat Boy, you're on Run of Fez. Hey, Earl, I want to call you out, man. Why can't you be honest? You're saying that Nash is the next Larry Bird because he's the next white superstar. Why can't you be honest? Why That's can't you be honest and about, say dude? that? That he's got white people interested in the game. That's what you're trying to say. No, not at all. I just thought hey, on, they have the same approach to the game. They show. don't have the same approach to the game. That's fucking a lie, Earl. They play a totally different game. According to Earl, all white people are good for are running corporations and being president and Me, astronaut. What he means by the same... Uh, Approach to the game is both of them walk white. They kind of uh, don't have a strut. Earl. No, not at all. Here's uh, Chris. Chris, you're on Run of Fez. Hey, uh, this is a first time caller here. Love you guys. Just got my XM. Uh, how many of our billion dollar players are playing 
uh, over, over, you know, in the, in the in the WBC. There's a hell of a lot of them. The lineup looks great, right, Earl? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, you know, the, the total the total pack is just like in the '92 basketball. Yeah, it's pretty damn close. I mean, we have fucking superstars playing in this thing. You know, you, uh, there's no way we should not be fucking dominating. The, we, we've got no excuses to make about Canada kicking our ass yesterday. Other than uh, Earl's thing of, you know, we don't have enough blacks. It always comes back to blacks are better. Black supremacy. I, I, it's hurtful, Earl. Power to the people. It's hurtful. Jason, Jason, you're on Ron and Fez. How are you, buddy? Hey, Ron. I just wanted to tell you to hang in there against that racist and wish everyone heart power. Heart power. HP. One day we'll overcome. And basketball. Here is uh, Froglip. Frog, Froglip, you're on Ron and Fez. Hey, Frog. We're going to let you go, buddy. you got to be able to fucking listen. Here is uh, Dave. Dave, you're on the Ron and Fez show. How are you, buddy? Hey, guys, how's it going? Good, pal. Uh, I got a quick question, but first I'm going to put a little comment out. It was just pissed off because you got a white man excelling in a black sport now. Why not, and... just, why not just admit that, Earl? Oh, I've always admitted it. Hey, a white guy saved the sport, too. His name was Larry Bird. <sighs> okay, then I got a question. If you say Steve Nash is today's Larry Bird, which I don't agree, it's two completely games, who is uh, Larry Bird of, of today's generation? Who is the, in today's generation of Larry Bird? Let me ask you this. Who's the Larry Bird of hip-hop? Would you say Eminem? He had so much heart out there on fucking 8 Mile, he was able to somehow make it, even though he was nervous in front of the black guys? Yes, I love Eminem. See, thank you very much. You're just looking for the white guy, the white face, and something that's uh, black-dominated. No, I've, I've always loved Eminem because he was always sincere about it. Who's the uh, Larry Bird of Southern cooking? Who's that, Emerald? Is that where you're going now? Just stop with the racism, Earl. It's driving me crazy. Who's, uh, you know who the Larry Bird of politics is? Is that Bill Clinton? That Bill Clinton really is the Larry B Bird of politics. Oh, it drives me crazy. Here's uh, Ken. Ken, you're on Run a Fest. Hey, Ken. Hey, how you doing? Yeah. Hey, guys, good show. I just wanted to call that Earl know that Charles Barkley, who never pulls any punches in his actions or his speech, called John Stockton the best guard he ever played against, he ever played with, and probably the best ever. And so, what's Earl think of that? What do you, where do you go with that, Earl? What? I, I don't The man disagree. Fez calls Kevin Stockton. What do you say about that? That's what his friends called him growing up. I mean, it's very hard to dispute. He's the all times assist leader. He was part of the maybe arguably the greatest tandem to ever play the game, Stockman and Malone. Was there even any, when you really think about it, was there even one good black player? Now, Fez, that Kevin Stockton thing, uh -huh. if Earl would have done that, you would have screamed at him for 45 minutes. 45 minutes, you would have been laying him out. If he did it to me, yeah. Mm hmm. Uh, Rob, Rob, you're on Fez. How are you doing, hey. buddy? Hey, what's up, guys? Hey, man. Hey, I was. I was just wondering if Earl thought that the white guys had to send the back of the bus on the way to the game. That's probably, you know, the thing is, I always felt like the whites were forced up front, if I have to be honest about it. Because, like, when you were going into school, you wanted to sit in the back as far as the way you could get from the bus driver. No one wanted to fucking sit up front. It's like sitting up front in class. Who wants to sit up by the teacher? Here are, uh, here's Kevin. Kevin, you're hey. on the Ronnie Fez show. Racist Earl, last year, uh, Honky was the number one pick in the draft, and this year it looks like the two best players in college are both Honkies. We're taking your sport back, sweetheart. What do you say about that, Earl? Do well, you, they, well, the European style of play is starting to What about some of the white college kids playing right now? No, there's plenty of them. You don't fucking watch the game, do you? You don't watch the game. Well, I follow I follow enough college basketball. Yeah, I'm sure you do. Jim, you're on running fast. How are you? Hey, Ron, how you doing? Good. Hey, yeah, uh, I just wanted to tell you that uh, it shouldn't be Black Earl. It should be Double Talk Earl because every time he talks, there's always something different coming out of his mouth, and he never tells you the same thing twice. You know what I like to do? I'm going to put on blackface, sneak into his neighborhood, and find out what he really says. Fight the power. What you got? What's the power, Earl? Right now, in basketball, you're the power, and you're holding us down. Well, they don't own any teams yet. I ain't gonna, you got money. But what I'm saying is this. Why can't you give Nash what he fucking deserves? I did give and Nash I'm, what he deserves. I'm talking about Kevin Nash for what he did with the Outsiders. 
you know, it's kind of forgotten about. He completely turned around professional wrestling as we uh, know it today. Uh, Dan, Dan, you're on Running Fest. How are you doing, buddy? Hey, how y'all doing? Good. Hey, uh, I was just wondering if Farrell thought that, uh, unlike Black, uh, Nash was a smart player and a hustler. I don't know where you're going with that, Dan. All the white, all the announcers call the white players hustlers and white, uh... Here's what he's trying to say, Earl. You people use code words. One of them happens to be heart. One of them happens to be heart. I use heart all the time. I use heart in boxing a lot. You never use it for blacks. You always use it for, oh, that Jerry Quarry had a lot of heart. Oh, he had a lot of heart to hang in there like that. Oh, Rocky. Oh, Rocky Marciano had so much heart. Just, you know, everybody's a little racist, Earl. So are you. We caught you today. That's all. Here's Jason. You're on running Fez. Hey, Ronnie and Fez, you turn your headphone down. Earl, black power. Black power, brother, black power. Okay. Earl, what did he say? Because I had my headphones turned down. He said, black power. <laughs> Uh, here is a uh, creepy cold guy. Creepy cold hey, what's guy. Up? How what's you doing, up, buddy? Buddies? Yeah. Uh, I wonder if uh, Earl thinks that the palest of the pale, Eastside Dave, has a lot of heart. What do you think? Would you say Eastside Dave has heart? He has plenty of heart. I now I know guy. you're a fucking racist. He's so pale you can see it. Because he has no abilities. He does not have your abilities. All right, Marion Barry, here's a little, uh, uh, probably what you'd have to consider the Larry Bird of politicians. Marion Barry, uh, he didn't file his tax returns. Three years probation, is that what they gave him? Three years probation, yes. Yeah. Marion Barry lives large in his own way. <laughs> he escapes again. Yeah. You usually go to jail for tax evasion. You always go to jail, <laughs> but he escapes again. There's always something happened to Marion Barry. First of all, if Marion Barry went to jail, he'd probably have a more fucking comfortable bed. You would not bother Marion Barry by telling him, we're going to pull you out of, what's he in the ninth District down there? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. yeah, the district everyone, even black people were afraid to drive through and put you in prison. That's not, and you know, Earl, he didn't even run a campaign down there and he picked up like 93% of the vote. They just love him. One of the all-time great lines is, the bitch set me up. The he, bitch They showed up. after he won the last election there, he had done his, uh, he was having his celebration. What's that called, Fez, after the election? Oh, his uh, acceptance like inaugural speech his rally. Thing. Yeah, his inaugural rally there was in a fucking pool hall. And you just see him going, yeah, it's all going to work out. Guys are shooting a fucking stick right behind him. Uh, Danny, Danny, you're on running Fez. Hey, Earl, you said there's no uh, black basketball owners, but who do you think owns the New Jersey Nets? Bruce like, Ratner. Yeah, he's not the majority owner. Jay-Z is where you're going with that. I like balls. Yeah. Yeah, Jay-Z has like, I don't know, a couple percentage points, right? Yeah. I think they started knocking down the buildings in Brooklyn to get the uh, new stadium ready. I wouldn't be in too much of a hurry with that. I'll believe it when I see it. Brooklyn going to get a team, Earl? Um, I think eventually it's going to be a long fight, though. Yeah, I don't think it's going to happen at any time. Those buildings need to be knocked down. And they pretty much have to rezone like all of Atlantic Avenue. They've been trying to rezone Atlantic Avenue for like 50 years. You're not making any kind of quick moves in any kind of New York rezoning, any kind of New York uh, real estate. Just does not happen. Yeah, I mean, the last the last guy that tried was Walter O'Malley with the Dodgers, and we know how that ended. No, I never really got to the end of that. Are they still there? Are the Dodgers still in Brooklyn, Earl? <laughs> Because I don't hear you fucking people bring it up. I hear people who are 35 talking about how their heart broke when the Dodgers left. I go, how the hell are you pulling this off? Here is uh, Cracker. Cracker, you're on running Fez. Yeah, I want to know when Earl's going to give you guys a song that you can play when he uh, does his reverse discrimination that says, We're brothers, keeping the white man down. Thank you very much. What kind of uh, racism song? Is there to get back at black people, Earl? Is there even one? Um, I can't really think of. I remember the uh, the Panther chant was pretty anti-white. Yes, but what I'm trying to say is, 
trying to tell the black people not to be anti-white. Like you guys have this one you throw in our face every day. White people are so scared of black people. Now they're demanding that you play this in the baby's crib uh, moments after they're born. White people are so scared of black people. White people are so scared of black people. I don't like the idea of it, Fez. I think it's silly and it's stupid. Sounds like brainwashing. You know, all this started, and Earl took the heat of the U.S. baseball team, who, let's face it, they dropped it yesterday. They lost to Canada in a shocker, at least for me. I'm demanding now XM pulls themselves out of this. Who, you know, the only way this thing is fun for us, Fez, is if we win the whole uh, shooting match. That's what we want to do. Yeah, and now it's like the rest of the rounds of this thing. America goes out in the first round. It's just listening to foreign fun for the rest of it up through the finals. Yeah, well, good luck with that. Tim, you're on run Fez. Papa T Steve, Miss Soundboard Bronx Johnny. Okay. Hey. Does Steve Nash and Larry Bird even play the same position? They do not. No, Steve Nash a guard and Larry Bird is a forward, right? Right. The only How thing the that they have they in the common game? is skin color. White. Yeah, it's skin <laughs> color. That's yeah, all they have. And Earl lays that on us. Like, oh, those guys, they're so much alike. Learn to see more than skin, Earl. Learn to see more than skin. They both have big white hearts, according to Earl. Oh, I said the mental approach, their preparation towards the game, their their love for the game, the way they promote. And the no game. black guys have that. No. Are you saying Magic didn't have that? You say Michael Jordan didn't have that? Barkley doesn't love the game. No, I didn't say that at all. I'm just. But why? That was why the first is that name, a comparison? Honestly, that was the first first name that popped into my head. I can't think of a guy who's ever been an All Star who doesn't prepare for the game. You act like black people, get off the bus, take off their shoes, put on some fucking uh, Nikes, and score 30 points. It's just not true, Earl. No, I know that's not true. I just, I, you know, maybe it was, a, it was a bad comparison. Yeah. You're playing into stereotypes. Uh, right now, I, I'm i willing to bet this, Fez, without even knowing. Uh, although I did hear something from Jim Norton that... Um, that Earl was a myth buster. I'm willing to put up my guy Eastside Dave about for having a longer dick than Earl. Go dick to dick right now, boys. Uh, here comes uh, Dave's out. Do not. Go Where are you going, Earl? Just line up. I do not want to. Earl, this, this is your chance. Dick to dick, and let's see who's the winner here. All right, wanna... Dave's is out right <laughs> next to you. Where are you going, Earl? Where are you going, Earl? Come back for the competition. You can't go run down the hall with only three days left. <laughs> He's trying to shove it in my mouth. Oh! What? what? Your, your name is Mudshot, right? Where did that come from? <laughs> All right, I understand. Just put your balls up against each other. And let's just... I understand you want to protect your I, penis. I, that was utterly horrifying. <laughs> because it's white? No, because he was just... Remember, this guy hasn't had sex in a week, so he's a little... A little I happy. have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> he's... Hey, have you kept your Lent, Dave? Absolutely, 100%. Still intact? Uh, still intact. I even got some sleep last night. So you're getting used to it. I might get used to it. I'm not going to say that in the shower there's a lot of pre-jizz that just comes out naturally. <sighs> she always got to start that way. Now, uh, is your girlfriend staying over this weekend? Um, she is. No, she's not going to be staying over this weekend, but she is coming tonight. So oh. it's going to be difficult. One of you will. But we will be watching American Idol. and uh, Why don't you watch this show, Top Chef, so she can remember <laughs> some, of, <laughs> some of the great times she had when you two were broke up. That actually hurts me, doesn't help me. I watched Top Chef because you told me how cocky chefs are, and they were so obnoxious that I was cracking up. They are the worst but they people. get. They were saying they get so much pussy. They go, no matter if they're engaged, married, we'll fuck every waitress out there. I had no idea that's how it worked in the food service industry. Yeah, waitresses always look at the chefs as the rock stars, where they and they look at fellow waiters like male waiters like me as just dumb dorks, you know, yeah. like who have no real careers. So I was right. never ne never able to bang a chick. But the chefs in every place well, you're not like, going to pick up a chick by telling her that you're a waiter. But you can if you tell her that you're a chef because you have some artistic abilities, you have passion. 
But when I mean, you're a waiter, you're just good at carrying shit, remembering salads. But uh, I mean, I'm talking with, with my fellow co-working wait waitresses, and I would always lie and say, "I'm just doing this for my screenwriting career. I just need some experience so that Smart. I can write this into a movie." You yeah. know. They never believe that, though. That's, I can't imagine. Oh, you didn't have any power in that position. You don't come up with the specials. <laughs> so do you, uh, uh, she was with a chef, right? Yes. She what? was with a chef, a uh, French chef, 35 years old, everything but intercourse. Was he the head chef, at least? Head chef. Well, he was getting head chef. And French, which she is, at a French restaurant. Yeah. So they were there was lots of, I have a finger, balls, fingers, and holes. All right. But no penetration. sex. Okay. We're all adults. Jesus. Here is uh, Kirby. Kirby, you're on the Ron and Fez show. Hey, 5468, buddies. Way to go, old school for us, Kirby. Cool. Uh, I, I had a friend of mine back when I lived in New York, mm. and uh, he discovered the whole uh, heart equals white code word, and then he mysteriously vanished. So you might want to put on your black face and go into hiding right now. I'm going to put it on anyway. I'm just going to do it because I'm starting to be more comfortable that way. Black White is the show. Did you watch it last night, Fez? I did not check out the FX show. I didn't make it through the intro, if you want to know the truth. When I saw how bad the makeup was, I'm like, I'm going to try to watch this later. I saw them all on Oprah a few weeks ago. She basically ran the show before FX did. She shows so much of it. Well, I don't think anybody watches FX anyway, or else the shield would be big. But the, uh, you know, I was just so thrown by that fucking, uh, what, what is the Heidi Fleiss show or whatever it is? Heidi oh, Project Runway, Heidi, Heidi Plume. Plume. Yeah. I was so thrown by that, Fez, I didn't have time for anything. Chloe, winner of Project Runway. I thought for sure it was going to be Daniel. Hmm. I guess this shit wasn't good enough, Fez. Daniel was winning in all the fan polls. Yeah, but did you did you look at the stuff? I thought when uh, Daniel's runway stuff came, to, uh, came down the runway... Um, I thought it was like so simple and plain. I didn't see where it was a winning collection. I could listen to you guys talk, you gay guys talk about fashion forever. Here is uh, Michael. Michael, you're yeah. on Rana Fez. Uh, card holder th uh, 3810. All right, buddy. How are you? Uh, good. You know, I was enjoying myself until that media whore came back into the friggin' room and started talking to you guys. I ripped into him yesterday. The guy, did you, hey, hey, what is it, Eastside Bob or Dave East, or whatever? Eastside East Dave. Knee pads? You bring yeah. knee pads today, friend, to get on the radio? Is he busy, uh, Earl? Is he taking care of business? He's taking care yeah, of business. he's All taking right. care of business, right. All right. That's right. Nice. The guy gets on there with the Mr. P, Mr. B, and still talks about his girlfriend, who definitely got anal from the friggin' chef, without uh, a doubt. Uh, Dave, there's some uh, blowback against you here. There's an anti-Dave thing going on. Yeah. I mean... The guy's so self-absorbed, it's ridiculous. You know, you get your knee pads, sit there and take care of it, get your little media time. Oh, this is the guy who called in yesterday, right? Yeah. The yeah. Guy, you moron. He you hates know, you. Are you still using a Mr. P or Mr. B? Get some material, all right? Knee pad boy. What he's saying is that you keep going to the same bit. Yeah, every single day. On, get over the fact uh, Fez uh, uh, talks about basketball with Kevin yeah. Stockton. He explained to John. us all about Heidi Klum, and he, he was able to... You know what I mean? He has things outside of his own little universe where you just seem to be about you and your girlfriend mm. and your bodily, and yeah, your Fez, fucking bodily oh, fluids. It's like a broken record. What I'd like to do okay. is find out who she is, you know, win her over, yeah. date her, right? Yeah. Knock you out. Tie you up in a chair and do her in front of you. First of all, it's easy to run her over. You just got to tell her tonight's special. <sighs> May I but I'm telling you, you, you come on the radio, you've got yeah. nothing. Go ahead. You get zero. Let, let okay? Dave talk now. The you don't understand the concept of a radio bit, which means yeah. I radio have... bit is bullshit. Will you listen, oh, sir? You move different well, are you... Every, how many wait. times have you mentioned this damn? Wait, wait a minute. This is interesting. I can't are believe. Are you that insecure? I can't believe that the newbie is going to explain radio bit to me. I'm really interested to I'm hear. Not, I would never dare to explain it to Mr. B. Okay, go ahead. His face. All right, so annoying. But listen up and listen closely. No, I hey, gave listen, up don't, masturbating don't down, for you, Lent. It's a recurring yeah, bit until Easter. I'm Lord. You're Surf. Do you understand that? It's a recurring bit until Easter. And by the way, stupid, I was asked about it by Ron. Fuck Who are you head. talking to? You You're not, fuck really not face. To me. Come you down idiot. here right now, and me and Master Poe. You're a village Poe, idiot. 
it, okay? Why don't you do this? You're, Come out. You, what you need is a hat with bells because you're a court jester. Here's right? what we're going to do. We're throwing a party April 1st. Eastside Dave is going to be there, probably drunk. Why don't you come out and meet him? And you guys just talk this over. I don't want any fighting. Meet but me. No, no fighting at all. Somehow just, you, know, you guys I can... Definitely verbally, I will verbally abuse this guy. Yeah, you guys I mean, can I, I talk just like gentlemen. Because he's, he's, he's such a, he's such a, a small-minded individual, okay? That's Do you true. understand when I'm asked about something, thought, I have to respond? Brain your brain. Do you get that when someone asks you, you have to tell them? Is, if Ron asks, how, how am I doing with the Lent thing? I'm going to say, hey, Ron, I can't talk about this. By the way, did you not hear me talking about many things? Like what? Canadians. Like what? Canadians. Example, serial killers. I know this because, Why were you, you talking know, about serial killers like today? I, record, man. You come in, you whine, you bitch and moan. Oh, I can't dance. I provided the... Said, you know something? She probably did everything with him. Yeah. All right? You so probably too. taste his anus. You gotta imagine. Yeah, I think so, too. Time. I provided the information for Dr. Maysmith. <laughs> that is, <laughs> that is, <laughs> that is <laughs> true. Thank he you. Did. Thank oh, you, But Dick. it's Naismith. That's the problem. Hey, whoa, whoa, whoa. Don't yeah, call me you. A dick. I haven't called dick. you any foul names at all. Okay, he hasn't. He's, he's treated treat you like a gentleman. Your intelligence, right? He's treated you like what a gentleman. You need to do is I'd like to apologize. Go back tonight, write down on a piece of paper a couple of new bits so I'm not bored when you come on the air. Right. right? That's a good idea. Tomorrow, you come in here with something new and fresh. You got Please. it. Could you do that? I could do it in 10 minutes. I can talk about no, anything. When I'm asked. It's regurgitated. Same right. scenario. Right. Chef and girlfriend and this right. and that. Hey. What's this yeah. on me? Mr. True. C. You know what I mean? That's that the fucking drives me crazy. You remember Happy Days? Yeah. Remember that? This is one of the greatest shows in America. The material from other people. Be original. All What's right. be original? Tomorrow's yeah. your day, Dave. He's giving you an opportunity here. What's your name? To win him over. It's Michael. That's Michael. Hey, Michael. Yeah. I'd like to apologize for calling you Dick. You penis-faced yeah. fuck! Come to okay, well, listen, come to listen, McFadden's listen, and I'll I'm going to put a knuckle listen sandwich listen in your jaw. Me, boy, do you want to get foul? If you're going to get foul about it, that's fine. If there's a party, I will meet with you and I'll discuss it like a, a grown-up adult. All it's right? McFadden's you don't, need to get high, you don't need to get high school with it. You've got an opportunity there on the radio to prove yourself, and you're making an idiot out of yourself. And true. I'm just pointing that out. You yeah, don't understand true. the concept of when someone asks you something, you He's have to tell them. And it, there's some such a thing is an ongoing thing. Well, later, if I didn't give it up what, for Lent, yeah, tomorrow I be talking about it, but I give it up for Lent. Tomorrow, well, you with you, it's like repetitive. It's not ongoing. Yeah, it's, it's fucking Lent. Lent. Yeah, but you had nothing oh, new. Oh that's why I call it right? effing Lent. Yeah, well, I mean, that's what Jesus did when about twenty five days in. But here's the thing: tomorrow, have something new. Don't yeah. discuss it with it beforehand. I mean, Please pull us all into it. I if I had an opportunity like you have an opportunity, I'd be a little bit more creative. Yeah, that's true. You should be a little more creative. I can you know, you come up with something creative right now. Bit, you know what I mean? And if I hear about the damn chef again, you know, it, it, it's, 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 driving it's, like crazy. A, it's a recurring nightmare. With all, right, all right, Michael. I'll talk to you later, buddy. Hey, fuckhead. Do I initiate the chef talk? I didn't think so, Michael. No response. <laughs> yes, 50 points for me. Michael just hung up. 50 points, Michael. So you take that as a win. I got a win over Michael. And that was a 50-pointer. 50, 50 now, points for me. Why don't you come yes. in tomorrow? Here's my impression of uh, Dave tomorrow. Chef, chef, jizz. No <laughs> can jack. No can jack. Chef, chef, jizz. <laughs> By the way, uh, ADF got... I guess some people confuse ADF with uh, Dave. So he gets an email going, Hey, man, I'm a real big fan of yours, right? And all the jack and talk. Have you ever jacked with a buddy? <laughs> you do not want to be known as the jacking bird. That's not something you're after here. I'm not trying to go for that. Once a once Easter is done, I promise no jack talk. That's it. Easter? Well, you jack talk a long time before Lent, my friend. Because it's a problem, and I'm trying to get help from it. <sighs> This guy says, what up? I'm a chronic jacker, too. My girlfriend hates it. Ever jack with a bud? Good luck on your 40 days of no shooting. Come on. Thank you, Trucker. Going to someone who is not Trucker, inside Dave. Trucker Steve. Thank you very much. So one of my Trucker fans. Guy. Just Trucker, Trucker guy. Thank you, Trucker guy. One of my many fans out there. All seven of you. I promise I always personally reply to people's emails. Always. Uh, this is your only one so far? One? That's number uno. <laughs> Here's Jimmy. Jimmy, you're on Run Fez. Hi. Yeah. Uh, I got to say, Dave slows the show down. He sucks. He is annoying as hell. 
You and you I, like him or you're still? No, no. I mean, I, he's the new guy. Let's he's face it. Yeah. So he's new. He stinks. Thank you. He's, he's like a walking abortion. Every time That's a great original that, comment. Wow. Well, shut up, Firebush. Shut up and listen. I shave, sir. I don't have a Firebush. I'm freshly save, shaven <laughs> like a little <laughs> tiny girl. I thought he called you Laura Bush, and I didn't understand that at all. Firebush. You shave. Fire, I shave so that people can't call me fire crotch. <laughs> the only reason why I shave. You honestly shave all the way down? Yes. Put it up against Earl's and let me see how it looks. Let's go up there, up against Earl's. Yeah. yeah. There you go. Earl. I'll step up to the glass. <laughs> Earl, right. step to the glass. He, Earl, you never go along with the bit. At least Firebush does. See? Nothing. It, it looks like a... Uh, I'm going to steal one from Anthony. It looks like a plucked chicken. All right. You know what? Uh, steal from the whole world, but not from Anthony. Okay? You know why? You got no fucking timing. People always hate the new person anyway. I don't sweat it. I know I have trucker guy. Here's all that matters, Fez. I want you to be honest. Yes. How do you think he's doing? Scale one to ten. I think he is doing an eight. Really? <sighs> yeah. That's high. Give me a guy who's a nine. Uh, Bronx Johnny did really well yesterday. Come on, stop busting balls. Be honest with us. Why would you put Earl in the same thing? Earl, Earl's at a six. Come on, you honestly think Dave is more valuable to the show than Earl? If I'm judging today, yes. Because uh, it's seven minutes past? Is that why, Earl? Yes. Okay. Thank you, Mr. W. And, Michael, did you hear that? I called him Mr. W. It's a term of respect and affection. It really is. And I will say this. The reason why uh, that we brought Dave in here so much is Fez wants him. Fez likes him in here. And I'm like, I was just talking with Fez about this this morning. I'm like, if you bring the guy in too much, there's going to be a little bit of heat his way. So you got to... Because I understand how the fucking listeners are. They turn on the radio, they hear one different thing, they start going crazy. Yeah, well... You're something new. Thank you. Thank something you, odd. You're like that fucking blonde-haired lobster that they found. You're just a little freakish. <laughs> oh, that thing is so gross. I hope uh, they don't start serving those things. Is it gross or the most fantastic discovery we've ever had? I mean, we're talking about a Star Wars animal here. Yeah, because it's combining two different kinds of, like, species or whatever. You know, you got a fish that has hair like a mammal. But doesn't that seem delicious? Like, when a lot of times when I'm eating lobster, I'm like, this is delicious, but I wish it had a little more of a... Uh, a collie taste. And my problem is, if I was the guy who found it, the first diver, I'd still boil the motherfucker and eat it. That's the problem. With the hair on? Yeah, you gotta have the hair on. Because you're only cracking inside, getting the, the luscious blonde meat from, from underneath. It's like, it looks Heather like Locklear and, and lobsters. It looks like it has to be shucked, like an ear of corn. Like someone has to, like, pull all the fur off of the silky threads off of it before you could eat it. Well, you don't eat the fucking lobster claws. You go inside for the meat. It's the same thing. I know, but it still looks like it should be shaved down. The hair freaks me out on that thing. Just order the tail. Do what you always do, surf and turf, like a fucking girl, and have it just that way. The fucking waiter, Dave will tell you this, he has it all set up for you, and you just scoop out. It's the perfect. I'll bring him one over to your house tomorrow. Surf and turf. Fez Watley style. Wait a minute, is that why he's an eight with you? Oh, because of movie night? You Meals. fucking Vendetta twins, you're fucking taking care of each other? Earl, you're going to have to step up and be my best friend along with Bronx Johnny. Yes, sir. We'll look like the fucking mod squad. I'll be the little blonde in between you two. I'm his Morgan Freeman to his Miss Daisy. What? Al does what... <laughs> what are you saying? I'm, I'm starting to believe with Michael. I'm, uh, I'm on fucking Michael's side right now. Here's uh, Penis Wrinkle. Penis Wrinkle, you're on the Run of Fest show. Yeah, man, Dave sucks, man. You got to get rid of this guy. He's like fucking Harry T in the goddamn pants joke. Just tired of him, man. Yeah, you know what? You are going back to that pants joke a lot. Fez, what are the odds we ever get rid of uh, Dave right now? Oh, the I would say it's like maybe down 5%, 10% that we would ever get rid of him. So the odds would be 5 to 1? Where are you going with this? 10 to 1? Uh, higher, like 50 to 1. 50 to 1 is 5% to you. All right, so 51. If I put down 100 bucks right now, I can make 5,000 from you. Right. I'm putting down my C note. 
You know what? I'll put down a grand right now. Start fucking looking at this stuff. I'll put down ten grand and start to think about a retirement fund. The thing about pants, though, Ronnie. Stop it. Okay. Here's uh, here's uh, Todd. Todd, you're on manifest. Hey, we were talking about that uh, hairy lobster. Thing. The blonde. I could. I I prefer blonde lobster. <laughs> blonde lobster. I, uh, I'm taking some biology classes at, in college, and I brought this up to my uh, biology teacher and. Her and I are sitting there, and she's looking it up, and she can't find it, and she searches hairy, hairy lobster, and it comes up her hairy pussies and hairy vaginas. Pretty awkward, weird moment with me and my biology teacher. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, anytime you get on Google, anything's going to fucking happen for you. But you don't think this thing looks delicious, Fez? No, I think it looks <laughs> like you're eating a Swiffer. And you don't remember that song Blonde Lobster by the B-52s? That fucking song was great. And so is this. Would you, let me, uh, you're a guy who enjoys dining out, Dave. Would you eat it? Yeah, absolutely. And yeah. I'd, I'd like to give it a little haircut and yeah. stuff. I'm telling you right now, turn it this way and you can bang it. Look at that thing. I would. I'll bang uh, any type of inanimate object. You know, it's really weird because you ever see those, like, blonde orangutans? That's what the arms look like. Oh, yeah, because they're real, they're long and real outstretched. It's the blonde lobster. Delicious. Ron and Fez, XM two oh two.